Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 10th, 2023. Well, Friday was kind of an interesting day where we were showing quite a little bit of bullishness early on. We were pushing to the upside after the uh, employment situation number showed us that the jobs um, situation was better than was originally expected in the ADP but what was interesting is by the end of the day those bears came back and they really started pushing us to the downside with some uncertainty about this week ahead so what does that mean well how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the Monday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, unfortunately, guys, we have a great big old bucket full of uncertainty this week, and we, we're going to start that off right here in this chart where we still have maintained that island reversal here in the diamonds chart. And as you can see, after breaking down here substantially, we have a price support in here that could easily be tested if the bears continue to find inspiration so if that is the case if we were to test this area uh, for that support if that were to fail not suggesting that it will but if that were to fail then let's look down here a little bit further we've got quite a little bit of price action support over in this area as you can see right through this area of the chart um, so keep an eye on that if we were to push down below this current level of price support now if the bulls find inspiration where could we go well i'm going to suggest that we would move right back up into this area right in here if you'll notice across here we've got some pretty good areas of price resistance in the chart and possibly even if we can break through there possibly even break just a little bit higher right up in here to retest that area where we gap down uh, from in the chart so the diamonds hanging in there now here's the thing to kind of keep in mind there's nothing terrible here in this chart you know if you'll notice right in here we've still got that uptrend going here in that chart so we'll want to be keeping an eye on that but at the same time in fact let's do this I'm gonna move this line there's our little upside trend that we've got going on in the chart but let's keep in mind we've got considerable resistance up there as well in price action now on the technical side of things we're gapping down this morning we may be holding right there at that 50-day moving average so we have some moving averages in play here that should serve as support but if they don't that's where things could get a little bit ugly and it could happen pretty quickly um, unfortunately there's not going to be a lot of data for the market to really react to um, on both Monday or Tuesday it's going to be a whole lot of wait and see what happens Wednesday Thursday and Friday let's take a look at our spy SPY also well we still have that island over here and although we tested that rallied back up here strongly on um, Friday you can see we still left that now we did fill that gap in there so it's not really technically an island pattern here but we certainly have the double top in here to be watching and that shooting star right here doesn't raise a whole lot of confidence just yet now saying that we've got some decent price support right in here on the spy so we could hold right in here kind of all depends on what the big techs do um, in the market if they're going to hold up bullishly the spy will stay up if they if they see some selling we'll start to see some problems with the spy but looking at this if the bears were to push down through this level then the only place they really have to go is right down here into that area of the chart now keeping in mind it's absolutely possible that we could just continue to kind of chop sideways 
here in the market and with a not much to react to Monday or Tuesday that seems like a fairly high likelihood that we could just chop around kind of waiting um, on uh, data points and the beginning of the big bank earnings coming in here on Friday so watch that technically there's nothing wrong with this chart um, even if we pull back into here there's nothing wrong with this chart as a matter of fact all we're doing is kind of giving up some of that overbought condition that we've been dealing with here in the spy if we take a look at our qqq very much the same pulling back in here there is a little tiny bit of price support right in here that could hold us in that chart if the bears can push on through there then I would suggest we come down into here. Um, if the bulls find inspiration, maybe a retest back up here. I gotta say that shooting star kind of leaves a little bit of question here and uncertainty um, on this chart and that possibility that we could just kind of slip sideways as we wait here for the next uh, couple of days for data to begin coming out. Again, technically, nothing wrong with this chart we're well above our 50-day moving average i think this is more than anything just a healthy resting period here in the market as we wait now let's take a look at iwm iwm um, shot up strong on friday it was the only index that stayed strong although we did have a little bit of bearish push in there on that chart which was kind of interesting that the small caps were trying to perk up with everything else not looking so good but we'll want to watch this carefully here we still have this uh, double top in here that we'll have to be considering in the chart and we're trying like crazy to hold on to this support after losing it so pushing up in here that's a bullish thing push up into here and hold then we have that upside up opportunity push up into here and reverse well, that's a different story, and then I would suggest uh, we would test levels down in here. So keep a close eye on this area right here. That's going to be a battle line, whether or not the bulls can keep us above that or if the bears push us below. If the bears push us below, it's pretty simple to see. That's the support level. Bulls push us uh, through and hold. There's the resistance level that we've been battling with for a long, long time. Let's take a look at our uh, VIX. Our VIX, well, we popped up in the morning um, and then sold off the whole rest of the day, despite the fact that we had selling coming into the close. So here we are, we're continuing to chop around in the VIX with really um, no clear direction, I would say, here in the chart. First off, if you look right here, we've got this downtrend in place. So we are reacting to that downtrend as we should, but we've got this little higher low going in here so a little bit of a wedging pattern there seems to just be an awful lot of uncertainty in this market and we're trying to pretend that we have no fear over that uncertainty um, we'll see as that goes on maybe that no fear is valid maybe um, it suddenly breaks to the other side so be kind of careful and then if we take a look at our t2122 well our t2122 rallied back up pretty substantially on friday and even with that selling into the close didn't change all that much so we're up here above our 50 percent area here in um, t2122 so you've got to give that to the bulls now if those um, bulls continue to find inspiration today then look for that upside move we've opened up that opportunity to push back up here into that overbought area of the market and if the bears find inspiration well then just notice we've got a long ways to go and we haven't been in a an extreme overbought condition i mean excuse me oversold condition in this market until we go all the way back here to march so as we continue to relieve this pressure and these uncertainties that are coming this week just kind of keep in mind if something does inspire those bears we certainly have a pretty good downside opportunity that could form up here if we take a look at our t21 oh 
T2108. Nice pop up here on Friday. You got to give that to the bulls. As you can see here, the percentage of stocks holding above the 40 day, we're up here around 62%. Now, keeping in mind, anything in that 60 to 75 range starts to um, smack a little bit of that overbought condition in the market. But still, we're doing good here. We're holding support levels. Um, we're holding trends. There's nothing in here yet to be a major concern. Uh, T2108. Darn it. Sorry. There we go. Whoops. T2107. As you can see, um, also held in there nicely on Friday. We held the price support levels. Our trend seems to be hanging in. And remember, we're right in that range. We're, we're kind of fair valued here at the at this moment. Um, anything that we start pushing up into here starts beginning to get just a little bit overbought in the short term. Now let's take a look at our T2101. T2101 has not made any kind of hook um, revision in that move. So right now, this is saying that that possibility of additional down move is still possible here in the market, but we might be right at that cusp here where um, we could hook this over and get that momentum to shift just a little bit. So watch that closely. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here. Our economic calendar, well, we've got not much to go on here today and tomorrow, but then it gets, well, it's gonna get a little bit weird. First off today, we're gonna be listening to an awful lot of Fed speak. We've got bar speaking and daily speaking. We've got wholesale inventories that can sometimes be interesting, but usually not market moving. We've got uh, consumer credit here at the belt this afternoon and a couple of small bond auctions to be paying attention to on tuesday as you can see boy it is a pretty dead day we've got that nfib small business optimism in a bond auction or two and, and that's about it for us to go on as we jump into wednesday you'll notice here's where things are going to get a little bit weird for us we got that cpi number coming in and expect some volatility to occur we may be just boring, boring, boring Monday and Tuesday. Everybody anticipating what happens with that CPI on Wednesday. We've got petroleum status in there as well, beige book. So keep an eye on that. As we go into Thursday, jobless claims in PPI are going to keep that uncertainty high um, as we move through. And then then we're going to jump into import export prices, consumer sentiment, and there is also the beginning of third quarter earnings season happening on Friday that adds to all of this uncertainty with the big bank reports beginning on Friday. So let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar for today and boy there's not a whole lot and there are a few other reports that, uh, that didn't make the notable list just because they trade such um, low volume but if you take a look PetSmart or PriceMart I don't know why I continue to call this PetSmart. Um, whoops. There we go. PSMT, Price Mart, as you can see here, looking uh, very, very bullish in this chart. This will report here this morning. Um, excuse me, I believe that it reports in the afternoon. So keep an eye on that. So watch that one close. And then we've got uh, WDFC that will be reporting here uh, today as well after the bell. As I mentioned, there are a couple of reports in the morning, but they're really not the kind of reports that are gonna move us a whole lot in the market. We've got Helen of Troy that will be reporting. Nice pop here on Helen of Troy, but this normally pay, uh, trades in such low volume that um, not that big a deal here for the market. This is the only pre-market report here today and we've got SAR um, this afternoon but again relatively low volume stock probably oops that's DAR there we go um, relatively low volume stock not something that's likely to move the market a bunch this afternoon let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up but before we do that guys if this is the first time you have seen these videos if you could please do me a quick favor if this you know, um, 
it does take, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but it does take a little bit of time to put these videos out. I do a lot of preparation to get these things out and, and it is really um, nice to see when these videos get supported. So when you click those thumbs up buttons, click those, uh, leave those brief comments, also clicking those subscribe buttons, it means the world to me. And I do truly appreciate it because as you can tell, I spend quite a little bit of time doing this and making sure that I can get these videos out every single day that the market is open. Of course, I'm just like everyone else, things happen and, and, I, and I'm not able to, um, you know, resolve internet problems or things like that to get a video out. But hopefully you find these useful. And I can tell you, this really is an exercise for me as much as anyone else. Um, I started doing this more than 20 years ago because I had that problem that a lot of people have in the market, and that is getting caught up in the drama of the day, getting caught up in in the news of the day, and getting that fear of missing out or that feeling that I have to rush. And when I started just doing reviews of charts like this and try to avoid all the bias and just look at the chart for what it is, not for what I want it to be, my trading improved. And so what I mean by that is looking at the chart and look at both sides. What could the bulls do? What could the bears do? Is it possible that we just slip sideways for the day? That helps you an awful lot in calming those uh, emotions down and putting yourself into the right mindset to approach the market for today. So if you find that to be useful, if you could help out with continuing to hit those subscribe buttons, leaving those comments, I do truly, truly appreciate it. Um, also, a big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link. You guys are truly awesome. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at some of these charts. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. Um, you're going to have to do your own due diligence. You're going to have to make sure that you're following your trading plans. And you should never, ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Make sure all these trades fit your risk tolerance. So first off, let's take a look at a couple charts that are looking very, very strong. Carvana has been moving in this incredibly strong upside move here and you can see on friday nice bullish pop here pushing to the upside looks to me like carvana has that opportunity that we could there's a little bit of price resistance as you can see but if we can pop through there no reason to believe that we can't start moving up through these next levels um, in the chart on Carvana. Very, very strong, beautiful looking chart. That being said, let's take a look at some of the oil sector stocks. Um, oil has been trying to make a move. As you know, we've been looking at um, um, oil supplies. They're continuing to slide um, and maybe be they might be sliding more than what we're seeing the demand destruction happen in um, in that sector. So we're starting to see some stocks basing in here. If you can take a look at APA, nice move on Friday, that opportunity that that could pop on through. You can see a little tiny hint of that upside trend as we get this little flap topped wedge trying to break through. Now we still have the consideration of this big longer term downtrend that we've got to deal with here in the chart, but it's trying. Take a look at um, OXY to type the right symbol um, oxy um, starting to show some signs we popped up above this downtrend a little bit of volatility in here um, certainly we still have this resistance level or will it be support level that we're struggling with but if we can hold up in here i'd start looking for that upside opportunity potentially here in some of these oil sector stocks now that's really going to depend on what happens here with the dollar we had a good strong weakening of the dollar here on uh, Friday, but now we're popping up here again this morning, adding a little bit more pressure to that as those bond yields continue to fluctuate quite a bit. We continue to push these interest rates higher. So watch that carefully here. This will be kind of critical whether or not those are going to move up or move down. Now, keeping that in mind, um, you might want to be keeping an eye on this UNG. Now, I have a bias here. I am holding a position here looking for a longer term 
hold in this. And although we did crack below that um, support level here on uh, Friday, notice we're popping back up here this morning. So I'm, I don't think this one's out of the woods just yet. Keep an eye on it. Now, before I would be interested in adding to this trade or doing anything with it, it's got to get over that downtrend. It's got to hold, get back above that support level and hold. And then I'd be interested to the upside. If this just rallies back into this resistance and fails, then I'd look for some more downside in UNG. If we take a look at um, some other places in the chart that have been uh, charts that have been really been interesting, take a look at PayPal. PayPal hanging in here pretty nice. We've bounced around here quite a bit. We're slipping past this trend, but so far we haven't given up this price support. So I would keep an eye on this. And if we're going to be bullish in the market, we're definitely going to need these pay systems to pick up. So PayPal, let's watch this for that next upside opportunity. Um, SQ might be one of those as well. A lot of volatility here just recently, really whipping around with that uncertainty, dollar moving and interest rates moving all over the place. But keep an eye on SQ. Notice that SQ is broken out from under this downtrend. So if we can hold in this area right in here, I'd be watching closely here for SQ. And I'm gonna say the same about Visa. Visa, very, very strong here, breaking through resistance, resting after we move up here. I'd watch for that next opportunity. Now, it could be a ways away. Keeping in mind, there's our little upside trend. It's possible that this could rest out into here. And since it doesn't report until the 25th, it may be just in a waiting pattern. But we're certainly going to need those charts. So keep an eye on that. How about FedEx? FedEx moving really nicely. Nice and strong move. I put an alert on this. I popped it on Friday. I chose not to trade it just yet. This seems to be a little bit steep for me in the rally. So I'd like to see a little bit more consolidation, a little bit more rest in here. But keep an eye on FedEx. It's starting to look pretty good as well. Um, U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel is another one of those commodity plays that's really going to be dependent on what the dollar is going to do. But you can see we've kind of come up out of this downtrend here. We're trying to base in this chart. So if this can hold this price support, I keep an eye on this. Look for that next higher low in there. We might be able to follow a trend to the upside and get some of those commodities moving if the dollar doesn't strengthen too much. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. And I will see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Have a great day.